I'm sorry, sorry, the motor would start. All right, sorry, the motor. And when would that, it would end after 10 seconds. Now, when would that end? After the 10 seconds, and the motors finish turn, what is what is to happen? Yeah, we press stop. All right, well, um, yeah, that was, that's what I'm asking. After the time, I'll stop. What is, what is to happen here? Oh, the old And then when does it end? Uh, um, lower level sensor, LLS. All right, so that would be my statement this for the process. And um, yeah, that would be my statement list for the process. But we said we wanted to trigger three times. So for that now, we are going to, we are going to be looking at, like I said, we're going to be looking to start over the process. But first, let me write the program as is. So we, we Just start, stop. So start switch, which we have as zero, zero, three. And it's going to end when LSA, so LSA, we have a zero, zero, zero. So what is started is inlet one and it's is and we'll add it. Second LSA so LSB is going to stop it. And that's in, in, inlet two.
third line. So LSB's address is. That should be zero. Right. Um, what starts the next process is LSP. Timer one stops it. And what is error? Everything. Got it agitator over here. Port line, time has started. The lower level switch. Stops it. And it is my The lower level switch is zero. All right. So, so let's. So this is the program. There are some things that we need to discuss. Well. So let's discuss the first thing that we, we're going to oh, We need to have the timer, T1. And it's for 10 seconds, so put number sign 100. T1 supposed to be started by LSD, but last time we said that when you practically do the thing, the, this, and depending on the type of switch you have, it is best to use the agitator to start. So that's the timer. All right. So, but we know we want the program to loop. So we want it to count. We want it to run three times before it stops. So we want this program to loop. So the first thing that we need is, is something to count. So in this circuit, they have a thing called a counter. So We are going to put in a counter, C, N, T, counter. Now, one of the idiosyncrasies of, of Omron PLCs is that timers and counters are regarded as the same. I don't, don't know if they are in the same every area or whatever it is, but you have timers, timer, if you have timer one, you cannot have counter one in your program. You have to have counter two. You have to, any timer and counter, as many as you have, each of them have to have a different number. And then the annoying thing about it is that you will probably see if you put timer one and counter one, the program sit on and look at you and behave. Uh, I have to put it this way. Um, the ladies, I don't know if the gentleman behave the same way, but when your spouse speaks with you and you, you ask her, what is the problem? You know. The same way this behave. Put timer one and you put counter one. The program where to say everything is fine. And you say, but it won't run. It's not running. It don't have no errors, no nothing. So 
please be very careful of that because sometimes you write some very long programs and you make that little mistake and you cannot find it because the thing is not helping you to find the error. So I have timer one and I have a count of two. Um, it's going to count it so that the process is three times. Now, counters, unlike timers, have to be reset. So you have two buttons, the trigger. So up here is the trigger and here is the reset. So you have to have a reset and you have to have a trigger. All right, so we want to count every time the thing goes through the loop. So at the, what we do is at the end of the program, <clears throat> at the end, we look at the last line because every, whenever the last line is triggered, then we'd have gone through the process, all right? So when we look in the last line, <clears throat> we see that the timer triggers the last part of the, the process. So we can use that to trigger our counter to say, all right, when, whenever the timer goes on, that is the third, third and last. But I would not prefer to use the timer um, because very last thing that is done in this process is that LLS turns off the outlet. I don't know if you see that LLS turns off the outlet. So that is the very last thing in the program that, LL, that we have. LLS turns off. turns off the outlet. So we use LLS to say, that is what we're going to use and trigger our code, our, our timer. And it is important for that we use LLS instead of timer one and timer two in this particular program. Recording stopped. We may, may explain in a little bit. So this is zero, 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 two, and it is our level, two our level. Now, the reset for the counter. What is going to trigger our counter to reset? Well, under normal circumstances, the first thing that you, you would do in the program, you usually use that. Usually, not always. Sometimes it's the worst thing you can do. But what we usually do is usually use the start switch. So it, when you start the program, it clears the counter to begin the process. So when you press the start switch, you can use other things to do it, but the go-to is usually the start switch. And if the start switch won't work because of the type of program that you have, then you go to other things. So the address of the start switch was what I get. Zero, 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 three. So we have set up the thing. Um, we don't need anything else, so I can put an end here. That's fine. So the counter <laughs> will count every time that the program, but we have the, the program has to loop. So when it when it which is the last line, it has to loop. So how we know that we use 003 to start the program, but I will go through to the last line and then we want to start back over the program again. So the same thing again that we said down here for, for triggering the, the, the counter. We say that the counter, LLS triggers the counter. So every time LLS goes and LLS fly, then it's going to count. But the counter's job is very specific. All it does is count. It don't do nothing. And when it finish counting, it's indicated to say, hey, finish counting. So the program needs to something to start it and put it in the, in the loop. So 
what we do again, whatever is the dead last thing that stops the, the last line of the program, we use it back up here as R with the start condition. So, so we would have zero 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 two. So that is going to start. And that's all we are good. So what we have now is an infinite loop. So it, if, if the program was installed as is, it would go and it would count and it would go and it would count and it would go and it would count. And the counter say, all right, reach three and it would go and continue looping forever. So when we have to stop the process. So what we do, by the way, this making sense, I, I, I'm sitting down here talking to my computer, the first time I'm at this. And I don't know if, if what I was saying making any sense or not making any sense. If you look at do like when me at online church, we're going to make some tea. I don't know here one basic thing that is being said. Yes, sir, we are fine. All right. All right. So we say how you restart the process. But when the counter finish counting, yes. I see somebody raised their hand. Sir, I was just asking if somebody could record the meeting because it seems the person that was recording got disconnected. Oh. All right. Let me make the worst person to record this thing, record it. That would be me. Give me a second. Recording in progress. All right. So we were saying that you had the loop. So the last thing that stopped it down here is the same thing that you're going to put as an R condition to start it. So the 0, 0, 0, 2, as soon as it triggers and turns off the outlet, it turns on back inlet 1. So it would be in an infinite loop. But the counter that is here, every time 0, 2 triggers, it's also going to count. 3, 2, 1, all right, we call 3. But it's going to indicate, it's going to set a bit high that you can use. So what we are saying now, is that we're going to use a counter to stop in the first line of the process. So this is my counter that I'm going to put in the first line. So when it reach three, it's going to trigger and stop. And everything else is going to stop after that. So I don't know if that makes any sense. So we just have one last thing to, to put in our program. Because you notice that we have used a stop switch. So what happens if somebody falls into the vat or something and we need to turn off everything? Then we would need to turn off our stop switch. No. So this is one way in which you're going to do it. We would put our stop switch in every line. So the stop switch is going to go in every line. No matter where you are in the program, it is going to stop it. Is, 
Yeah. I got disconnected a while ago. Um, what what you say would be used to stop it? All right. So I was saying that if we put the stop switch in every line to stop the process, no matter where we are in the process, so if you're in that valve, suppose the number of freezer dropping on the tank, freezer dropping on the tank. So that was when you press the stop switch, no matter where in the process it is, it would stop the whole entire. Stop the whole entire process. All right, so this is one way in which we do it, but this is not the only way, and this is not the preferred way, but I'll just put in that this works. On Friday, we talk about the preferred way. So this that we have here now is the entire program that will operate three times, and then when it operated three times, it, it is going to bring the process to an end. Oh yes, sir. Um, I was talking about the um, the loop I have to stop it from going into an infinite cycle. All right. So, so the loop to prevent it, we said that when the counter is three, we put the counter as a switch in the first line. The address for the counter as a switch in the first line here. So when we put it as a switch in the first line, when it when it goes three times, it's going to um is going to um. It's going to turn, cut out the first line and then everything, it, so the program will stop. So we, we, did, we don't have to put the counter as a stop switch in every line, but we just put it in the first line. But I was saying that the stop switch now, you put it in every line because you want it to stop everything. But the counter, you just put it in the first line because when you go through the loop, three times you just cut the first line, nothing else will follow up. Thanks, sir. All right. Um, Oh, senior moment, we forget what I was going to say. Um, what was it that I wanted to say? About the program that uh, um, yeah, I remember what it is that, that I was about to talk about. But what I wanted to, to, to introduce today is one is just the counter as a as as a part of the programming and the tools that you have, and to mention how is it that you start over. Oh now that I'm putting the stop switch, which is zero four. They start, you could, uh, I was to point out, right, that you could also use a stop switch as the reset for the counter. Because here is the problem. You stop the process and it had gone through two cycles, for example. Then your counter would still be, okay, well, it, don't, it wouldn't matter because you'd have to start back over the process, you'd have to press the start switch so it would still clear the counter. But I was just pointing out that you could use a stop switch, and on occasion is a stop switch that is used to clear the counter, right? So it could be used to clear the counter as well. But the reason why we wouldn't particularly pick the stop switch is that the process automatically will stop after three goes. So if that is the case, and it automatically stops after the tree goes, and you want to start it back over again. Then you press back the start switch, clear the counter. But you'd have to press the stop switch, and then press the start switch to clear the counter, because the program wouldn't work otherwise. All right, so I just wanted to, 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 to make that point. So just those two things that we needed to, to, to talk about for today.
So let, let us proceed to put in the program and see how it operates. Sorry, give one second, let me just roll up. Yeah, so new CP one each because that's what we have. So just quickly run through this and simulate where problems will arise. So the zero 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 three start zero 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 zero. Counter switch C two.
All right, so we will be going through and and using this as a thought. But um, I hope by now you you have all gotten to download the program. You all got a chance to download the program. Of course, I'm speaking to myself. We're still here. Yes, sir. Okay. You, you got the chance to download the program? Yeah, yeah. This program sir. It's just that I do have MATLAB. It's not MATLAB. This one is nice and working great, except MATLAB. Oh. And yeah, you don't need MATLAB for this one. Well, we need MATLAB for the, oh, the assignment, sir. Oh, that's a, you're talking about the people, you're talking about the teacher to engineer and analysis, right? Mm -hmm. There is a different, you're a different person here now. This person here, who oh, no, not about engineer and analysis. All the business All right. <laughs> All right, boss. Mm -hmm. uh, sir. Talk, talk to engineer and analysis teacher about, about the matter. Mm -hmm. Sir, just another dude for the block, sir. Okay. I'm so, I'm so nice. All right, so. I forgot something. Um, this is now zero ten point zero three. Now, my class ten point zero three. Uh, this part usually don't work in simulation, so let, let us see when you put the output. Mm -hmm. 
but it works practically. So we need to put in the timer. So that's TIM. Timer number one. And for 10 seconds, number sign 100. And then now need to put in the counter. To number two, it's supposed to allow this to run three times, and let's um, reset it with the start button, which is zero three. In my end, in this thing, I can't come back. Yeah, so I notice if I've made any error, so I'm going to simulate it. So you always simulate the thing first before you we go into where the pass and running. So let us see, we're going to go on. Let's see if it works. So first on. And you see the green, the green part supposed to indicate what the output is on. So you see that everything is on, the green part is on, so the inlet is on, level switch don't trigger. So, and I'm going to, 
Who is this? Uh, but is it that it that so it will continue? All right, so now we're going to trigger the L level switch. So force are set on John. So it's going to turn off and turn on the, the next input. Um, we're going to trigger LSB. So I'm supposed to stop. And the time is supposed to come in now. And so the first problem that we have here is that the timer is supposed to come in and then turn on the outlet, but the agitator is still on, as you can see. So we would have to go fix Oh, because I did not turn this off. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, so everything is a mess right here now. All right, so the outlet is, let me just see if that part of the program. So I'm going to trigger a level switch. So the level switch, I'm going to force it on. All right, I'll force it off. Let's see if at the back top of the program, it starts to work again. So that part worked, but um, I was forgetting to turn on and off the different. So let us. So let us see. All right, so when it go through the, the process, all right, let me switch A, fly. So I encourage you to write the program and test it. So let me switch B, fly. Let me switch B, yeah, of course, and let's have a little thing here. All right, so there's a problem in the program because, oh, I told you, so let me stop and then, so here's the thing now. Remember I told you that in the simulation, that this agitator turned on the thing, don't, don't work, but it works, but it works the other way when it is practical. So I'm going to change this, this, Agitator switch to LSP and see if. Because what is happening is that the timeout doesn't stop. So let me change it to the, to the LSP. All right, so we're going to run the simulation again. There's another way out of this, by the way. Um, but we we'll talk about it in the next time. So. That if there's a little padlock there, you can use 
um set on Yahoo Fuse Force on. All right, so LSA, we're going to set LSA on. We can set LSA on. All right. And then we're going to set LSB on and see if it works with the timer. LSB. Turn it on. All right, timer is going. So we need to turn off and then turn on the outlet. All right, so that works. So the time has timed out. So the level switch now. So um, so the level switch is supposed to start back over the process when we say that it has it is triggered. So we we'll force on the level switch. Oh, all right. Here's another problem. Is the reset I didn't turn off the start switch. Uh, because it would be a push button switch, it would be off. I didn't turn off the level switch. Because level switch would have also been off. Let's be still on to say. Yeah, when I force them on, I need to turn them off. The yeah, LSB it. All right. So push button switch, so that is when you, you push them and turn on and turn off. All right. LS, the lower level switch, why is it still on? Oh, it was done, and turn off. All right. Yeah, so the process still start over. Level switch A. Next one. So this one here, force it on, force it off. Am I running? Okay. So now, now you see the problem. If you turn it on and turn it off before this, it, that's why I was telling you when it agitated. There's a problem. Because if you turn it on and turn it off before the time, then um, the time will stop working. So it was on and then we said force it on and then force it back out. The timer is a problem. So there's a way to fix this. Um, another way to fix this in, in software that will make it whatever work. And so let me just deal with it now and talk about it now. Um, you have a thing called an internal bit. Internal bit is 200.0, 200 etc. 200.99, 200.1. I don't remember what where where the internal bit stops. So you can you have an output that you can have as an internal bit. Now that internal bit that that is there, when it turns on, when you turn it on, is not it is 
it is configured as an output, but it's not an output. It's just internal to the machine. So you can um, remember the state of your switches. So you can take a switch, put it to an internal bit, and then use that internal bit to remember the state of your, of, of your system. All right, so um, well, we're going to use that to solve the problem because if we put 10.0, 10.02 here in the simulation, all that happens is that when it, when it is running, All right, let me, let me stop it again and try the 10.02, but let, let me be a little, little bit more diligent with turning on and off this is. Changes is back to then. So um, it automatically does what you would have to go into PLC. Just um, if you were to be doing what it did physically, you say transfer the program to the PLC. So you, if you're connected to a PLC, you'd have to transfer to PLC and transfer the program before it begins running. All right, but it, it does it automatically when you're doing a simulation. So let me do these things and turn them on and off faithfully. So turn it on, turn it off. So that is running, that light is okay. Force on, force off. And then LSB. Timer works on, works off. Okay. So if you did it, again, so now with the Wrong. We need to push it on and see what happens to the counter. So it was supposed to go to worse, and it's supposed to start back over. All right. So we push it off. I'm just going to go through this three times and see if it will work on, work off. The last outlet turns on, so force on, force off. System is on again. Just seeing if it, it will work.
So remember that usually it's restart, but the counter has no timed out. So therefore it is now off. So the system is off. All right, so the simulation works for that type of program. All right, um, so So we're going to um what I'm going to do now is post your post your post the final assignment. So you're working at the 30% one, you're working at 70% one, and then a two is lab and a lab test. Sir, question the final yeah. assignment. Um this is the program we're going to do it on. What the final assignment? Yeah, I'm going to do. If you, this is the program you're going to use to do it? Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir, may I hear you? I said, this is a program, CX program. Mm -hmm. okay. But I don't know who are who in the class. I don't care. Because some people might use, be somewhere where they use Alan Bradley or so one of those type of things is not a problem. Use another PLC and do it. It's not a problem. Okay, sir. All right. So like I said, there are, there are other students in the class who said that not in this class. I don't. Nobody has said anything to me in this class. But other students in other previous years said they prefer work with the one that they have at the workplace. Is is usually other practice. All right, sir, um, for the 30% um, assignment, when is it due? Well, I don't want to set a due date other than the end of the term, but everybody, uh, if we if say due date other than the end of the term, oh, we have assignment, we have this, we have that, why? Everybody has even except you, and you can't go down that evil part of pressuring the young people, them. not the not so young people, them. And we have way particular COVID, and blah, 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 blah. So. If you are in editor. So the end of the term. That's at the beginning of the next term. So which date specifically? We don't reach, reach that yet. I don't, I'm not sure where the term is. Oh, the 23rd. All right. All right. All right. So we we'll stop in here. So on on the next class now we're going to be talking about um the memory and using the memory. Reason I just allowing one concept per class. So therefore, we're going to talk about memory on, on Friday, and we're going to talk about internal as well. All right? Uh, you can save this CX file and turn it to us, sir. Save this? Yes, sir. Save yeah. what? Share this with us, sir, that CX file. Oh. No, that, that usually, you have to either go, like I said, you have to go download it after the net or. Um, yes, sir. Sorry, um, sorry. Um, the program that I write is what I'm talking. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No yes, problem. Sir. All right, I will do that. All right, so Friday. All right. Sir, can I talk to you before you leave and everybody gone?
Yeah. Is you me supposed to talk to? I'm not sure, no, sir, but. <laughs> All right. So link me back on the next WhatsApp, uh, on the regular WhatsApp that I usually use. Say that again, sir. Um, I'm going to close this program. And right, now no said link me back on the normal WhatsApp that you normally. Link right, on the sorry. normal. Zoom. On the normal Zoom. All right, no problem, sir. Respect. Hmm. Recording stopped.